Hi everyone, today I'm chatting to Mohammed and um, I'm very excited to <laughs> I'm very excited to introduce him to you and there's there's multiple reasons that I'm having this conversation with him. Um, so we're going to go through quite a few topics um, and quite a few concepts which we may or may not split into two separate posts if they become quite diverse. So this is going to be pretty cool. This is going to be interesting. Um, as a slide sort of up front, the three main reasons that we're having this conversations as a little bit of a, a mini preview as to whether or not you want to carry on watching or not. Three. One, um, Mohammed is a qualified CA. So, you know, in terms of uh, in terms of journeys and, you know, I always like sharing different people's journeys and experiences, especially those of us who don't have like these perfectly clean, beautiful, happy journeys. Always good to share, always very inspiring. <laughs> um, number two, <clears throat> as an entrepreneur, I think very, you know, very valuable. And as an accountant entrepreneur, also a little bit more rare, very valuable. And so many of, of, of my students and so many of my audience are also looking towards entrepreneurship and stuff as well. So as an accounting entrepreneur, very, very interested to have conversations around that. And then the third component is your actual business, which is also really, really interesting. So yeah, there's three components, you, your entrepreneurship and your business <laughs> that we're going to be chatting about, that we're going to be chatting about today. So that is why, that is why um, I'm, I'm chatting to Mohammed and um, some of the interesting bits and pieces that we are going to be talking about. So, uh, welcome and thank you very much for for your time. I really appreciate um, I really appreciate you sharing all of this stuff with us. Hi, everyone, and all of your one's viewers. Accounting study advice. Thank you so much for your time. Um, the pleasure is all mine. I really do appreciate you taking the time to um, outline in detail. Firstly, that great structure <laughs> around the three questions. Um, I think. I, I certainly have um, a lot to say and a lot to share. I'm always happy to, um, you know, speak about accounting and other things. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for providing this platform for myself, for um, our business. And yeah, looking forward to it. Um, ready to, ready when you are. Awesome, great. So first up, um, we all know the qualification journey, right? So as a, as a, as a chartered accountant qualified in South Africa, we all, we all kind of understand the journey. So, but there's some interesting components of your particular journey that I kind of want to discuss a little bit. Um, so <clears throat> one, um, the, you did really, really well at school. <laughs> and then university Sorry happened. Days. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> then university happened. So, how did you feel about how did you feel about that at the time and how do you see that now absolutely um and yeah i guess um high school and matric was the peak of my academic year <laughs> days um, uh yeah no i did i did i did i did really well um within my field um too and uh, I got nine A's, um, I was Ducks of St. John's College. And I just say that, as you say, to see the, the Icarus fall a bit later. You're allowed to that... brag. It's no, on your it's... CV, it's public knowledge, you're allowed. No, it's... no, thank you, thank you so much. It is a low-key, humble brag. Um, I have to drop it in there, as I say, because it was the peak of my academic um, career, if I'm being honest, you know. And um, the funny thing is that, you know, St. John's College, itself doesn't offer accounting as one of the subjects that matrix can write. Just because, you know, I had signed up for accounting and was supposed to study accounting didn't mean I was going to, you know, study accounting <laughs> once I got to campus. Like you said, you know, um, campus happened, campus did happen and it happened in a big way. Uh, for myself, my interest personally lay, lay around English and literature. I loved English the most as, uh, you know, as a subject at school. I really enjoyed writing. Um, and then, you know, the, I had that discussion with my parents. My parents made some very good points, like, what are you going to eat? Words, you know, <laughs> which is not, <laughs> which is not to disparage um, journalism and any of, you know, um, those no, type no, of no, And I'm at fine. the time, I myself felt very accosted. I'll be very honest, you know. I think a really tricky thing that happens to a lot of 18-year-olds and matriculants is, you know, being faced with the decision of making a choice as to what you wish to study, your career path, which often feels very final. The pressure on that at that point in your life feels very final. Um, the rest of that... my life depends exactly. on what exactly. and, you know, and I'm like 18 years old. I have no life experience. <laughs> like, I don't know what I want to do. Um, and my parents, you know, 
guided me. And to be honest, it was the best. I, I, I know I, I, I didn't like it at the time, but <laughs> I, see, I see it now, honestly, yeah. as one of the best um, decisions or, you know, guidance that they gave was, you know, try this. And if you don't like it at the end of it, you know, at least you'll have Something a great degree, on. you know, yeah, a great degree, a good qualification. And that's putting it mildly. Um, I was exposed to, you know, a totally new world. Um, definitely meant that I didn't invest myself in accounting studies at all, right? I think I went for the first lecture, the first two lectures of pre-accounting week. We had pre-accounting week at Wits. I went to Wits University um, for those of us who didn't study accounting at school. And I mean, I sat in for two lectures and I was like, yo, that's a no from me. <laughs> that's a no from me. Um, and yeah, I know. And it also didn't, I mean, it didn't help the accounting study, but then I met some pretty cool people, you know, in my first year. And I got like super into all the freedom and the aspects that campus can, you know, that comes along with it. And I'll be very honest, um, I, I scraped by. I did first year, first year is fair for everybody, you know. I think first year is, is a nice, it's, it's not too bad compared mm -hmm. to matric. I, I, I did decently without having, you know, to get too into it. Second year was a bit tougher, you know. Second year, I was just able to scrape by. And second year was also the year I got very invested myself in campus politics, you know, it was overwhelmingly a positive experience, even though my personal politics have changed tremendously from what they were at campus. Along, fees didn't fall, but my marks certainly did. And <laughs> that's, that's, um, that's, I really ended up failing for a uh, third year, you know, for the first, I, I ended up, I and mean, you can't, that's just it, you can, I said, I've said it, you can scrape by through first year and second year, yeah. but third year is where four majors, you're going to pass all four majors, the degree doesn't play games, right? And a hundred percent. So no, I failed, I failed third year cataclysmically. And it was a great, it was a great wake up call too. And also in the sense that I was like, okay, let me give this a real chance, mm -hmm. you know? And, and you know, actually got into it, and that was the other. That was also like a revelatory, mo a, a revelatory mo uh, moment for myself, because I was like, you know, this is actually really useful information. You know, it's one thing writing down, um, you know, thirty-six thousand rand uh, tax-free savings account for S twelve T for three marks in an exam, but you can actually use that information to your own benefit really well. You know, you yeah. can if you have, as, as a young South African, you know, it gives you an advantage. And, you know, um, after, I, I, I mean, I can't believe, I, I couldn't, I would never have believed it at the time, but I actually enjoyed accounting and I enjoyed, I mean, certain parts more than other, but, you know, auditing, like auditing was the most for me. And, you know, I suffered, I suffered <laughs> with auditing, um, despite like, and, and I think the problem, despite me becoming an auditor, like doing, going to end up some audit articles, you know, I suffered with it. And mm. I think a lot of it was down to the way that I studied it. Um, mm. A lot of it was swatting you know, fourth year. And in fact, I think I was telling you just before um, we started recording, in fourth year, I actually ended up tutoring. Yes. Um, and I, yeah, and, and, and also great, you know, great experience. You know, to be honest with you for myself, having been or having experienced that academic peak, right, at matric, the reality is, and this is, I'm only speaking from my own personal experience, is that it really doesn't matter that much once you get to campus. Right, that the that the the, the skills, yeah. you know, it's not it's not all about like the jump from matric firstly to campus studying is is different, right? There's different levels, there's different you know um, expectations. There's also that level of freedom. No one's really checking in on you. Like it's mm -hmm. up to you to do it yourself. So um, yeah, I think that's it for me um, in in some in summarizing yeah. that um, the my, my academic journey from. From no accounting at all to, to, to doing like you know the, to being a CA a qualified yeah. CA which is yeah, yeah. yeah it's really interesting and there's, there's a couple of things that are that I kind of take away from that if I think of most of the students that are uh, I chat to and the types of things that that I hear one is um, we we have this impression that in order to be a CA you you have to have like the top 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 marks of everything like you won't succeed and you won't qualify if you don't get like you know, distinctions and everything all the way through your degree you know the, no. so that's that, that's still a misconception that I get from a lot of students is um oh I'm only getting you know I'm only getting 60s in third year I'm never gonna pass CTA and I'm like wow you're getting 60s that's amazing yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's incredible. you should tutor um, me like yeah wow, could you tell me what I should have been doing <laughs> you know um so there's there's that um as well as I think the the fact that um, just because 
your path academically, you know, sort of took a bit of a tangent and branched off doesn't mean that you can't come back from that. You know, so again, like a lot of students have this idea that if you want to be an accountant, you've got to be perfect from day one. You know, you've got to climb that ladder. You've got to be perfect. for that. Don't let anything go wrong because it's always going to come back to haunt you. So I have a lot of students who are like, well, I'm very worried if I fail CTA or I fail third year or I fail ITC, that we kind of feel like it's always going to be a stain on our existence and our careers that we're never going to get past. I think that's important to take away from, you know, from, from your experience as well. And, you know, my sister's studying accounting too. Oh, yeah. Also CA stream. And I, and I see the same pressures, you know, she's in third year, the same pressures, you know, as we got there and as it applied and amongst her peer group. And, you know, I'm trying, I try to tell her that, you know, just, you know, do your best, do the tasks, et cetera. But it's crazy to see how it's, perpetuated mm. still, you know, mm. four to five years later, um, you know, it's still, it's, I don't know, we need to do something about that, I think, because it, it's not, it's not the truth, man. Like I failed, yeah. I failed third year so bad. Yeah. I failed, and, and really, you know, it was, and, and touching on that, it was the best thing to Yeah, happen. you mentioned like, that. Really, yeah. It's really, yeah, it was one of the best things that happened to me. You mentioned something fairly interesting um, in terms of, you know, your exposure or the fact that you were involved in all sorts of other things on, on campus, which is really interesting. Um, but, but you mentioned that a lot of people around you, like a lot of your fellow accounting students were not. And I think that's very interesting because that's my experience with accounting students is you get into that route and it's like a funnel, you know, and that's all you've got. Yes, You're yes. completely obsessed about the qualification, capital Q. Yes. And that's all you can think about. You know, it's like, it's obsessive. Uh, you can never study yes. enough. You've got no outside interests. You have no life. You're completely obsessed about it. Uh, it's all you talk about. It's all you think about. It's all you stress about. I'm sorry, that's Belinda. Um, and <laughs> I think that it does it does make me sad. And while I understand, you know, the, the mental and the time necessities that it takes in order to pass the exams, like I totally get that. It is interesting. And I think it is very limiting that a lot of accounting students keep their lives very narrow, um, you know, while they're qualifying, because it doesn't actually give you a real perspective of what life is about. So I know for me, it was very similar. It was like, I was, you know, single, narrow-minded, single focused, obsessed. Um, okay. I was, a, you know, I was a part-time student, so I didn't really, I didn't have the time or the resources or the ability to do that either, but I had no hobbies. I had no life. I had no outside interest. <laughs> there's, there's no balance. Um, the challenge with that is that to some extent that doesn't really stop when the studying goes away. You know, if that's how you're used to living, there's a tendency that you're going to carry on doing that. So it, it is important to consciously realize that your world has become very self-centered. And I don't mean that in a selfish way. It's just that all you can think about is my qualification, what I need to do to pass my stuff. And that means that you're at the center of this very small world that you're not really aware of what's going on with other people. You're not focusing on the world outside. You're not focusing on other issues, hobbies, et cetera, et cetera. So that's quite interesting and, and definitely is um, that approach or that breadth is fairly unique uh, amongst, you know, amongst auditing students in, in, in general, or at least the stereotype, in, in, you know. Accounting as a marketing problem, you know, accounting to me, accounting to me is like, I know it's going to wax, I sound like I'm waxing poetic, but accounting is an art, right? Like if we think about it, it really powers the entire business, it, you know, if English is the language of business, accounting is the syntax, right? It's debits and credits across the world. It's how the business world function. It's cool to have insight into that. You should make that known, you know, that's cool. It's not about crunching numbers. The history of accounting in itself is so cool, you know? If you just do a but it's, I don't know where this perception came from, but we need to actively fight it because, agree, you know, yeah. Yeah, you know, we, I, I think so. I think so, you know. And the thing is, accountants have a lot to offer. They have a lot to offer by getting people involved at that level. By, by having this, uh, you know, a professional level, a professional degree, and also having the network capabilities, you know, later in your career. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's what this affords you. I think having that exposure, that experience, just being 
you know, get in touch with what's going on. You don't have to agree with anything, but it'll give you, you know, a bit of yeah, perspective. Great. And yeah. you can effect change when you get there. Like being a accountant should be a whole, whole more well-rounded, et cetera, okay. because that's what you are, you know? Yeah. Uh, that's, that's, that's so much yeah. more what you can do to great. society, for society. Like it's, it's the truth. So something very interesting, I think that is evident in the South African society and also um, in American society, right? is a high, high prevalence on your occupation, right? Oh, yes. Your occupation your occupation pretty much determines who you are as Sorry. a person, you know? Sorry. And going to going to university is is a, is a big thing in the States and here. Mm. And that's what we saw with Fees Must Fall, you know? For me, the crazy thing was like, you know, the, 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 mm. the, the masses, the population want to study, but we place such, you know, um, evidence on it, as opposed to, I would say, some of the European countries which divorce that you know your occupation is what you do from nine to five and then who you are is a different subset yes. it's who you hang out with it's yeah. you know I'm, I may, you know, I know I'm generalizing here but it's just you know something I've seen in and I think something to do was uh, uh, an avenue to do is to again divorce you know try to work towards you know you are not your job here but also accounting is cool and accounting has much more to offer yeah. there's so much more and yeah yeah. It's a good point, and it's something I often say to to to, to students as well. Because um, I think that even while you're on the qualification path, it's quite dangerous to be so. Um, I don't want to use the word narrow because it feels like it's a negative thing, or it feels like I'm being judgy about it. But I mean, I was there. I know. Like, it's your whole world is your qualification because that's like your big obsession and this big goal that you have to reach and like everything points to that. So I totally understand. I totally understand that. But um, it is very dangerous to have anything, just one thing, define everything about you. Everything. So, well put. Um, mm. so one of the things I often say to my students is think about when you introduce yourself. It's the first thing we do. It's like, hi, I'm Yvonne, I'm a chartered accountant. That's yes. it. Okay, yes. so now, yes. if you're not allowed to introduce yourself in terms of your occupation or your aspiring op occupation, so a lot of my students will be like, you know, hi, I'm Yvonne, I'm an aspiring chartered accountant, you know? Yes. Cool. So yes. let's assume you're not allowed to say that at all. How do you introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Yvonne, yes. I'm a crazy cat lady, you know? Hi, everyone. I am, you know, like, who are you outside of that? And it's so fascinating yes. how much yes. we have to think about what it is that I would want to tell someone. And then it's like, is it about what you want them to know about you or yes. about yes. what yes. you yes. know about yourself? Like, for me, you know, I, yes. yeah, I'm, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a crazy cat lady. That's it. You know, like, and I, and I'm, but, but depending on who I'm talking to, I may prefer that they know that I'm an entrepreneur or that, yes. you know, I live here yes. or that I do that because I want you to think something about me. And Absolutely. That's, that's more yes. than like, you know, I have eight cats at home and you know, that's what I spend my time doing. It's just, it's, it's I think it's, I, I totally agree with your comment there. And, and um, it is really important. It's not so much divorcing, it's just bringing it back into balance. Yes. It's like, you much are better not put. your qualification. Yes. Because yes. the danger of that as well is when things don't go according to plan, your entire yes. world cracks. And your definition yes. of who you are is now broken. And I, I have it so often and so it breaks yes. my heart yes. when yes. I see, especially at a higher level, CTA, ITC, my students fail and their whole world cracks because that is like the entire definition of who they are. Like if I am not yes. a chartered accountant, I am nothing everything I understand about myself, about who I want to be, about my value is gone, you know? And I yeah. just, I see them, I, I just, I, I see them falling apart because I'm not who I thought I was. I'm nothing. And I'm like, I know how heartbreaking it is and I understand the scope and I understand, but it's just an exam that you failed, you know? Yes, and yes. It's not yes. going to be yes. held yes. against you forever. It's a step in your journey. Yes. There's a reason for it. There's stuff you can take um, from it, yes. learn from it. It might, in retrospect, might be the best thing that ever happened to you, depending on, you know, what journey you follow or where you take from it. It might always be crap, but it's part of who you are. But it's not going to be, well, that's it now. My life is over. You know, no point in, I'll never be qualified. I'll never be a success. I'll never be who I want to be. And I think that's just, I worry for my students' sake that 
exactly as you say, when you define yourself by this and this alone, um, it's out of balance and it doesn't actually allow you to be yourself and it's dangerous when things go wrong. The pressure comes, you know, sadly from the society and our peers Agreed. around us. I think there's, a, you know, it's Agreed. like there's a lot of pressure to know what you have, to, what you want to do and how you're going to do it at 18. So quickly. It's so unfair. So unfair. So I'm like, you know, and and kids, right? Um, and it's not beneficial to us, I think, no. as a society to do no. that or to have that. Like, you know, okay, no, maybe it's the here's, best. Here's the thing, right? How many of us have seen those motivational posters? You don't grow in your comfort zone. Failure is the best way to learn. You know, all that crap. All of us have seen those motivate, but we don't believe it, right? We believe it for other people, oh, no. right? So all my students yeah. are like, yeah, yeah, I've got the motivational poster, fail to learn, and you don't grow in your comfort zones and all of that crap. And I'm like, do you really believe that? Yeah, 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 I do. Okay, so when you failed the last question that you did when you were studying, how did you feel about that? Oh my gosh, I'm going to fail. I'm never going to qualify. Okay. I'm like, so explain to me how this works. So part of my challenge and one of the reasons that I do what I do as well is like, we need to talk about this. Because mm, all my mm, students think that they're mm. the only ones who are <laughs> failing and they're the only ones who are worrying and they're the only ones who are struggling. And like, the stereotype is like accounting students are smart. They always get good marks. They're always like well. achievers. Well. They're overachievers. Yes. They're A-type personalities, blah, 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 fish based. And I'm like, the reality is like every single accounting student I know is curling up at night, crying themselves to sleep. At some point, I'm like, I'm, I'm, you like are I said, not alone. <laughs> The degree is flipping it tough, is, it right? Is. It's 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 and all four at once. It's it's you Not know, funny. yeah, yeah no, funny. and I, I totally um I, and, and that's just it. Like you know, there were also times there when I was there, I was like, oh my god, I'm never like you know, I could never do this, and I'm never good. What the substantive never procedures, like right. uh, yeah. no, exactly, and 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 that, and you know, it's crazy. Like I said, I think five years later. My sister and her peers are doing the same thing. thing. It kills me. It's so, it upsets me so much because what happens is there's this continuation where nobody's saying, do you know how many students I speak to when, when I deal with them like one-on-one, eventually they'll tell me that they lie to their peers about how they're doing because they don't want other people to know that they're struggling. So this perpetuates the whole thing because you're lying to me about how you're doing and then I'm like struggling. I'm feeling like I'm the most like ridiculously stupid. So then I lie to you because I don't want you to know that I'm stupid and you're not stupid. And now you've got a hundred people in the class all lying to each other, you know, in one form or the other. And then the lecturer is going like, is everyone okay with this? And you're all like, no, I don't know what the hell's going on. And you're like, yeah, yeah, no, I'm good. Yeah, yeah, you're good. Yeah, yeah, I'm good. We're all good. And you're all going home going, I have no idea what happened there. Kill me now. And then you email me and go, Yvonne, I'm failing. <laughs> I don't know what's going on in class. Can you help me? <laughs> Absolutely. Like, okay. Absolutely. That, that's 100% like, it. Stop and, um, perpetuating uh, the lie that this is mm. easy. Stop perpetuating the lie that accounting students always do well and have mm. to do well. Stop mm. perpetuating the lie that this is not a struggle because it is a struggle. Stop perpetuating the lie that you've got to get stuff right first time, every time. Because Amen. you don't. Amen. <laughs> and you won't. Let's just break yeah. all that crap. It's so funny that the more articles, like, you know, you, you read from Harvard Business Review or all of these things on leadership and insight and things, it's like, you know, fail fast, fail often. It's okay to fail. You're always going to fail. Yeah, yeah. What Why did you is fail today? A... Like, the, su- yeah. the guys are successful people. are like, what did I fail at today? No, it just, it just indicates, you know, it told me it was, it, when, when you fail something, it tells you something about what's going on in your life or what's going on when you fail a test the test is telling you that at this level the assessment of what we assessed in the test you weren't able to meet that that it's all it's just a test of that type of thing yeah. at that time yeah. you know when you fail um when i failed that it wasn't it was telling me you know like you just got to look take a self-assessment and see what's going on this it's an indication it's nothing you know but the, the psychological stigma and association okay, okay. is that you know it will be and, and you know that's a totally human thing that's a totally human thing. I like. I, was... I think it's it's like this is why I focus on mindset because as accounting types have a very specific mindset. You know, we're very like very similar types of people are like herded into the accounting profession, mm, right? Mm, like, mm, let's be honest, true. the guys mm, at mm, school mm. who didn't get good marks quickly, mm. you know, and who weren't like overachievers at school, you don't tell like the arty, slightly slower dude with a learning disability. 
you don't tell him, oh, you should be an accountant, right? Like that doesn't happen. So very mm. similar types of people are herded towards the accounting profession. These are guys used to doing okay. They're like fairly quick learners. They're good at numbers. They're good with pattern mm. detail. Mm. Da, 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 da. Mm. So now you've got this whole pool of people who all have the same strengths and weaknesses. Mm. And part mm. of that mm. strength and weaknesses is that mindset that my test and my results and my achievements define mm. who I am. So 100%. instead mm. of seeing that test as mm. exactly as you say, this is an indication that I have more to learn here. Mm. We see mm. that as an indictment on our intelligence. Yes. Like yes. yes. The yes. test told me that I am stupid. No, yes. the yes. test told you that you have a little bit of work left to do on deferred tax. Absolutely. It's, it's, and you know, again, very it's hard to make that shift. Very easy to say. Oh, two very brilliant hard points. To do. Exactly. It's a mindset shift, as you've put it so well, and it is insanely hard to do that. You know, it is insanely hard to make that shift and to see it for what it is. And then it becomes an opportunity. It becomes a tool in your arsenal. Your, your, like things are telling you where to work on. If you're not failing, like, you know, um, consolidations questions, that's cool. Like, you know, you know, you're fine there. Go work on the deferred tax. It's okay. You're getting zero for a reason. Get, get three, get four. <laughs> like, you know, you don't have to get 80% for each thing, please. And don't put that on yourself. Don't do that no. to yourself. It's, 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 it's a fascinating thing. And this is one of the conversations. This is why I like having conversations with people like you is because one of the reasons that we want those marks is not so much about... Um, you know, oh, I want the good marks or like, I want to be a hero. One of the reasons it's so important to us deep down is because we're so terrified that we're not going to be successful. We're so terrified that we're not going to make it. We're looking for external validation and quantification that I'll be okay. So like, if I get yes. 80 for this test, then surely I'll be okay. Like I, I have to yes. be okay. I will qualify yes. as a CA. Yes. I will be successful. I will be able to feed my family. I will get a job, you know? So I think the, yes. the pressure that we put on, on ourselves um, to get these marks, it's not so much about, oh, I want to be a hero and I want to get great marks. It's, it's much more insidious than that. It's like, if I'm getting good marks, it means that I'm on the right track and I will be okay. You know, I will be okay. So it's that uncertainty or the fear that mm -hmm. if I'm getting 55s now in third year and this continues to drop, then by CTA, I'm getting 45 and, and then I won't qualify as a CA in my whole life. You know, and you can kind of see the whole path playing out before you. So <laughs> oh God, every yeah. test you do is That'll like right. an indication yeah. of my future. You know, this is the representation of my future. And this is the representation. And the reason that I want people to see these types of conversations is because that's not your future. You know, no. just like the guy well, that's getting... We'll see, we'll see. No, no, but it's not because we, we choose that at every point. It's like, yeah. you know, at the, the, we can't, exactly as you said earlier, you know, we, we finish school and we go, okay, you know, where are we going? Like, I've got to choose my path now, forever. Mm. That's not what the world mm. looks like. Like, it doesn't work that way. Yeah. Like, almost every single day, every year, every month, every whatever, you're standing at a, a fork in the road that you can yes. choose which way to go, you know? And so well you may change that, you may go back, you may move, you may shift, you may jump roads, you may jump paths, whatever, and then come back again later, whatever the case is. The, that's how the world works. That's how, how life works. But we kind of believe that we're on one path, you know, and, and it must yes. be this, like I must get 80% because otherwise I'm mm. never going to make it. And then I won't be able to qualify and I won't feed my family and I won't be successful. Whereas in reality, there's people that are used to get 80%, you know, in third year that never finished qualifying. There's people, yes. you know, that, yes. that, that did CTA six times and are now ridiculously yes. successful CAs. Um, it's all about what you make of your experience. You make the experience right or wrong for yourself. So uh, take the pressure yes. off of my whole future yes. is dependent on what happens in this one test. And I totally understand that. I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not disparaging how, where that comes from. I totally get that. But we feel like our entire future, the weight and the burden of our entire future is sitting on our shoulders every time we sit down to do a question. <laughs> it's not. It's fake news. It's not. And whoever's, and whoever's telling you it's that important, um, they lie. It's to yourself. You. And you're right. No, it's yourself. You know, that's you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. And I, I, you know, I told, I actually, I do agree. I agree with what you're saying. The, the one thing we can do, and I think an important thing that you are doing, as I see it now, is to then share stories like like this. You like know us, what I'm saying? Yeah. That it's, no, no, 100%. And because that's the evidence. 
That's yeah. the evidence, you know. 100%. You can we say made on the third it. year. Yeah. Yes. No, well, well, that's just it. Yeah, 25 CIO. Yeah, it took it took a lot. But, <laughs> but that's just it. That's yeah. just it. And to be honest, I wouldn't have swapped it for everything. And the other thing is like you've got to expect it at some time. You can't be number one all the time. Like really, and it's not a healthy, it's not healthy for no, you to do that. I think no, um no. it's you know, like it's good to it, it's perspective you put it so well it's all about your perspective yeah every t- every day we face with a myriad of choices it's yeah. what you choose yeah. that determines your you know yeah. where you're going to go really yeah. and what and and you the nice thing the good thing i think is you can change your mindset it takes yeah. work it, it does, does take, take work, work but you can do it and and i think you'll be better off for it i know i had to do it and multiple times and that's a nice thing you know but the thing is once you i think once you be, become open towards changing and then yeah. you know a growing and a learning be like yeah i can be totally wrong about this yeah. i was totally wrong about this before i yeah. can so it's you know i think it really helps blossom and bloom into yeah. helping you you know along I your agree. own journey so, so I, yeah, I totally so agree and i think even more as you know as things change as technology shifts and 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 and, and um, everyone in the world, you know, in all professions is talking about how incredibly crucial it is that we as a human race develop and work on our skills of adaptability and relearning and unlearning. You know, the yes. concept of yes. word, even the word unlearning didn't really exist 10 years ago. You know, I never 100%. heard the word unlearn. Yes. What do you mean unlearn? And yet mm. now it's like an accepted part of like, Things are so different now from what they were when you know, I was yes. growing up. I'm not even yes. like I'm not that old, you know. <laughs> but the world looks so yeah, different no. now. I, yes. I definitely there are things that I have had to unlearn about how the world works. Yes. Where I was like, I grew up, yes. and for me, this was like, this is how the, there's a corporate ladder. You got to get on the corporate ladder, yes. take steps up. You know, if you get fired or you lose your job or you get retrenched, like then you're going to fall off the ladder. You got to choose yes. the right ladder. You got to keep climbing. You know, da, 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 and you got to be so, so careful to stay on it. And the world doesn't look like that anymore. You know, yeah. I had to completely yeah. unlearn. And when things didn't quite go right for me in terms of corporate life, I was terrified that this is it. My career is over. Yes. You know, whatever the case yes. is. So yeah, unlearning is a mindset that. You know, that if you're so brittle about, I've got to have the right answer, I've got to know everything, I've got to be okay, I've got to have good marks, I've got to not fail anything. You don't have the right mindset to be open to saying, maybe I'm wrong about this. Like, yeah. has the world yeah. actually changed? Does this, does this still apply? Is this still relevant? Um, you know, the people who've changed the world the most are the people who sit back and go, I don't know, I don't see the world like that anymore. Like, isn't there a better way? Isn't there a different way? Isn't there something else we could do? Isn't there like, I don't like that. I don't agree with that. You know, it's, so we, we kind of go like, but Yvonne, there's a textbook, you know, and like our whole studying and everything about our studying focuses on there's one right answer, you know, and one path and one process. And it, it kind of embeds itself in your personality, but in, in life. It doesn't work that way. It's really not true. It's really, it's really, really not true. I, and something I've learned in my journey, you know, um, you know, there's, there's, there's always, you know, you can look yeah. at things from many different perspectives, right? And often there's shades of gray, right? And open yourself to that. Don't think it's all or nothing, or this is the only way. And, you know, you, it's a bit of, it takes a bit of effort, but that's creative thinking, that yeah. creative thinking. And like you say, it's the people um, or, uh, who say, I don't like that, or there's something we can do better or differently, yeah, we'll step back. That I think ties very well into that creative slash yeah. innovative yeah. slash entrepreneurial thinking. Okay. That's the seed. Yeah. That's the yeah. seed of entrepreneurial thinking is like, this, this isn't working for me. Like I could do this better. Oh, there's a better way to do yeah. that, you know? Yeah. And, and for me, um, the thing is, I'm sure most of us have had those feelings and had those, like, you know, those, those sparks or whatever. What I like, again, okay, what I like about accounting is it gives you the foundation and the basis mm. to be able to take that and run. Do you know, you can good. take that and run and do something with it. If you'd like to set up a business, if you'd like, mm. you know what I'm saying? Like, I, um, it's, and, and that's going to your, to your point you said of, you know, I think we should really, or I, uh, hopefully stimulate or try to get more entrepreneurial accountants. So, But it requires just, a, um, it requires a, a frame of mind and a mindset of, asking questions and yes, interrogating yes, yes. what you know. And yes. in terms of, um, if I look at the way that 
we learn, the way that the accounting qualification is set up, um, the subjects at all the levels, we are not taught how to question stuff. In fact, we're kind of actively taught not to question stuff because this is the way this it must be. No, 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 it's like, I, I, I'll, I'll argue this with no. anyone. You know, I mean, I've, I've, I've lectured, you know, auditing and accounting from first year through to board level. So I know the syllabus, I know the process, yes. I know yes. the lecturers, I know the stuff, I, like, you know, so yes. no, we, we are not given the opportunities. We are not taught how to question the world. We are not taught to have a curiosity. Mm-hmm. We're told this is how you value inventory. Yes. That's it. You know? And then it's, it's a case of like, yes. it, like, that's the lower of cost and naturalizable value. No, but that doesn't actually make any sense if you think about it, because if I'm a business that's been operating for 30 years and I can tell you like tomorrow I will sell five cans of Coke for five rand 50, do, why are you telling me that that's a less valuable estimate than, you know, the valuation that I've put on my building? Like, stupid example. But the, the point is, like, there are things that we just don't question because we're not taught to question, because we're not supposed to, because creative accountants go to jail, which is such rubbish. Um, so it's, there's, there's, part of our, there's part of our skills as mm. professionals that we need to realize are not being developed. And one of them is we are not taught to question and be curious and go, mm. what if it didn't work that way? What would happen if? Is that the only way to do it? That seems weird. That seems like a lot of effort, you know? And that's a discipline. That doesn't come naturally, especially not for us. You know, that's, that's such a great point. That's, uh, I'm, 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 I'm like, you know, I'm itching in excitement over here. I think we should be like the Sherlock Holmes. We should be the Batman of, of, <laughs> of, of the finance industry, really. We should be out there asking the hard, tough questions because that's what matters, that you know that you have that questioning mind, professional skepticism, that you have that inquiring inquisitiveness yeah. you know yeah. practical applications as you pointed out so well a stupid example it's a great example of in real life how text the prescriptive text how does it apply and yeah, it's so it important look- because yeah. exactly and it's so important to me because i think because the world is evolving right and things are not like it's moving way too fast for the accounting standards for example cryptocurrency i've read a couple of papers that were put out by yeah. if you know and yeah. they they say that it should be marked as an intangible asset yeah. with an indefinite useful life yeah and none you know, of us were going to get to that on our own that's for sure <laughs> no exactly so i was firstly, not going like, to come up with that uh, on my own <laughs> no and that's just it. like my first thing was like okay you know fair value through profit and loss um what's it um financial asset fear but you know yeah. the, the, that forum and like that should be i think that should be that would be such a cool thing to have in university discuss this you yeah. know and yeah. how would it apply etc because that's more of kind of the value you would add once you're out and I don't know for me personally and I think those critical inquiring questions they help not only within the the accounting field and the studies but also um, to help you in your own life and to help others and to help others you know how can I apply this how can I do this yes you know a questioning mind has never um, has never been a detriment to anyone's detriment yeah it's never been no 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 I think I think uh, yeah yeah and more so, and more as the world changes beyond, you know, what you learn in your textbook today, you may know it like absolutely beautifully off by heart and in three years time, it's obsolete. Absolutely. You know, like, and, 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 and that's all, you know, so the, the question is, you know, if you're not able to learn on your own, you know, you're not going to have to go back and redo an exam when IFRS changes or when the standard mm-hmm. changes or when the VAT or the tax law changes, you don't have to go back and write an exam. The expectation is that mm-hmm. you're keeping up with the stuff that you're supposed to and that you can learn the stuff on your own and do, you know, use it and work with it and whatever. But um, I feel that, you know, that there's so much in this one, the stereotype of accountants being boring, creative accountants are a bad thing. That's rubbish. Um, accounting is limiting rubbish. Um, it's, it's so much more. It's so much more exciting. The opportunities are so much bigger than we were ever taught that it was. And we talk about we talk about opportunities, and and so many people do this. Um, you know, like oh, you know, take opportunities. But I know, like, if I think of my students, and I also know for myself as well, there's a very big difference between saying you're sitting in your chair waiting for opportunities to come to you, right, versus you're getting up out of your chain going hunting for opportunities. There's two different things. Because when people were like, oh, Yvonne, you know, you must take opportunities. I'm like, I'm sitting, I'm waiting. 
like people aren't like dropping by you know and handing me opportunities i'm not i'm not passing opportunities up but the very big difference was like wait a minute Yvonne, you're sitting at home in your chair Yes. figuratively waiting for opportunity because that's what we've been told you'll get the ca profession and then opportunities are going to fall out the sky onto your lap no 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 no. you've got to get your ass out there you got to go hunting you are so 100 you know? right and in fact um something that i like to bring up when having discussions on this that you know that um as a as a point on this is you know some of the reading i've done has indicated so they've done some studies Tracking, I, uh, I mean, some studies tracking it, you know, but mm. the, 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 the point of this was um, high school students from when they graduated until they were about 40 or so, right? And they tracked them across a, a variety of metrics, so IQ, oh. um, demographics, especially to see where they would, uh, sorry, they, they tracked their business success, right? Success in business. And the key defining feature for the businesses that were successful was luck right, was luck. The overall was luck, really was luck. That's a little depressing. I, no, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. And the reason why, and I'm going to tie it back into it is, I then, if you take that, right, like a quote I like by Seneca says that luck is what happens when opportunity means preparation, right? Yeah. So, and, and that's quite true. You know, Gary Player said, yes, um, I was just the, more say. I practice, <laughs> the more I practice, the luckier I get. It's yeah. very, very true. It's very, uh, yeah. I like that one by Seneca where, uh, where luck is what happens when opportunity meets preparation because yeah. what do you have control over there? You have control over the preparation side, I'm right? Saying. You can do as much as you yeah. can prepare. And I think that's what I was saying, like having the accounting background or whatever gives you a good foundation yeah. for opportunity. And what can you do about opportunity? I think, you know Put what? You have to th- exactly. You have to throw yourself in the path repeatedly. of opportunity. Absolutely. Repeatedly. You know, and the thing is, oh, yeah. absolutely. And it's tough and it's grinding. 